Hey guys, Romy here, so please like, comment, subscribe. This is my review for Married to Medicine, Season 5, Episode 8. Fly Girls and Low Riders. The episode starts off with, well, everyone's kind of doing their regular activities, so we're going to start this off with Dr. Simone. She's there, and she has a patient. Her name is Henrietta. She's 21 years old, and this patient, she's a little person. So the patient's mother, Henrietta's, Henrietta's mother, brought her in there because she's never had a physical. And when I say a physical, I guess, what, like, been to a gynecologist <clears throat> and gotten all of that taken care of, or at least looked at. And so Dr. Simone's going through everything with her, and she's like, yeah, there is a little discomfort. Your mother can, of course, be there for the physical. But then Henrietta wanted to know that she's thinking about trying to start a family soon or you know at some point starting a family she just wants to know can she naturally give birth would there be any complications and dr simone said yeah it is possible that there could be complications it's possible there may not be you just have to do tests and so aside from that she also said it doesn't really matter if it's another um little person like a little man or if it's not a little man just like how she could give birth to a little person um or she could give birth to a child that would be you know grow up and be i guess regular sized if you will so i thought it was nice that they brought that uh it brought that aspect to the show the show is very good for bringing and showing other sides like i think it was last season we saw the transgender so the show is definitely um does that well and I'm glad to see that it's black people doing that because i feel like sometimes other groups or even other black people look at black people as just ignorant not open-minded um all that stuff so i'm happy about that now let's get to the mess the mess as in mama lucy so no no, no mama lucy isn't the mess that was rude mama lucy was a part of some mess there we go Mariah's talking to her mother, and Mariah's just trying to figure out, look, everything was cool, everything's kind of cool, collected. She did feel like things were going to go a little bit left with giving out the awards, but she wanted to go and honor her mother and also showcase her friend. I said, you really didn't have to do that. Like, let's stop, let's stop acting like, even though it, it was positive, that you weren't uh, being shady on some point. And if you really couldn't see that, then that's the bigger problem. So, they do talk about you know, Miss Renee and how Miss Renee was lit and that in itself was a whole lot. Dr. Heavenly goes and meets up with Quad because remember, Quad didn't show up to the event. So Dr. Heavenly's filling in Quad on what actually happened. Um, side note, I know I've been a little lazy with the green screen. I got, I got a new stand for it. So I just have to figure out how to put it up correctly in my room and we'll be good to go. I'll have that more natural lighting look, if you will. I need to get even better lights. It's morning time, as you can see. So my lights are being defeated by the mere sunlight coming in from the curtain. Anyway, while all that's going on, <sighs> Dr. Heavenly just also talked about how she, right now she's still, her and Simone, they haven't been talking that much ever since the whole voodoo trip. And she understands that her demeanor was what it was. So they'll eventually talk. But the main scope of that position just had to do with the fact that Mariah honored Toya and made sure to put that out there that, you know, and it's just great because, you know, regardless of what issues we've had, at least she's never, um, you know, disrespected my mother. And we know who that was directed to. Actually, that... You know what, let me back up, because I feel like Mariah, she's made some, I don't know if enemies is the right word, but she's had some frenemies. So, let me say that it may not just be Heavenly, but Heavenly's definitely on that list. Now, because uh, that was a very, because who would say that? If you're just trying to honor someone, why would you say that? Because that's going at someone else. Come on now. Come on now, that's just common sense. Now, Miss Renee is talking to Contessa, and Contessa was just like, whoa, you were a lot was going on at that party. And Miss Renee was on, and she said, you know, she wasn't comfortable around the ladies around that group, so she drank more. And so then she was acting differently. 
So Contessa wants people to realize that, look, they just saw Miss Renee on a bad day, want to do, want to have a do-over, and she's going to have everyone at her house. She's going to have a 90s themed party. And Miss Renee was like, look, don't make it too bougie. Oh yeah, this is the episode of seeing everyone's pictures in the 90s and they all look good. They did. They did. Um, but, oh my god, Bigsby, stop, stop it. Bigsby, stop. Stop this. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, Miss Renee, I could, I know what the issue is. Contessa, she brought in a party planner and Miss Renee kept saying, look, you need to make this um, fun, not bougie, and I got it. It's a two-pronged problem. Miss Renee isn't comfortable around those women. She feels like, oh, because they're supposed to be doctors or lawyers or whatever. And at this point in time, she's being someone's um, nanny, essentially. That's a huge part of it. She doesn't feel comfortable around them She because she's probably thinking, oh, well, what do they necessarily think of her? And I'm thinking, she's too grown. She's too grown. She successfully raised a son or multiple kids. She has nothing to prove to no one. And then the other part is because her current title and her current job that she willingly did. She didn't have to do it for money. She willingly did. You can tell that she loves kids. And I, I feel bad that she's taken how she feels about, I guess, um, what people perceive what she's doing as and having this other woman tell her what to do maybe that's the other part maybe she doesn't like the fact that she her boss is this um other young woman who technically because she's her boss is telling her what to do and maybe this role just isn't for her or maybe she just needs to fall back from being around the others maybe i can tell that they saw that she had a personality so that's why they're like yeah let's put her in front of the cameras but we may just have to dial that back because if that's what the issue is then just don't have her around anymore. And when I say don't have her around, I mean don't have her all involved with everyone else. Just have her do the stuff at home. She doesn't have to go and mingle with the other group. Contessa's strong enough to do it on her own. Now, Dr. Jackie invites her husband over because they need to have a conversation. And she wanted to. So he goes and, again, he acknowledges that. Um, she she says she appreciates everything that he's given her and, you know, just showing whatever. But she was like, you know, that I don't need those type of things. And he was like, yeah, but it's just my way of showing the appreciation since obviously I couldn't be there because of what I did. I said, okay, cool, taking accountability. And he acknowledged that, look, his actions were his own. A again, for people who this is going to go over their heads, his actions actions are his own at the end of today tomorrow forever him cheating is because he chose to cheat now he did say something that threw jackie off because he went and said you know what i know this is this has been hard on the both of us i said oh god i said dang you were doing so well you were doing so well why did you say that regardless if it's true or not and i'm sure it's true that's not the issue i'm sure it's true but you can't start going down that route if you're supposed to be taking um full accountability and saying i'm you know it should have just been sorry that i heard you devastated you um and stop there and see the response sometimes when we feel caught up we say too much and then to make things worse I've seen that many times, so I know what I'm talking about. And so then Dr. Jackie goes down the road of, you know what? She's had breast cancer twice. Her father passed away, hearing the news of her father passing away. But she said this, she believes this is what hurt her the most. And I said, wait a minute, I had to think about it. Because just like what I've been saying all along, she's been getting the support from Curtis for all of these years through all of that, through her father passing, through her having breast cancer twice. He's been there through everything to support her. So she's always had him as that support. Um, 
And so someone who's loved her and held her down through everything went and publicly humiliated her for the world to now go and say, Oh, so you're a doctor, you're accomplished, you have it all except for your relationship. We already knew that it was trouble. But now your man is out here cheating on you with some, we don't even know who she is or what she does. <laughs> so I get it. At least she could mentally prepare for everything else. But that, how, how can you? When you think that you're with someone who that's the last thing or one of the last things they would ever do. So I got it. So after that, she was just like, look, she is interested though in continuing to speak to him and see, um, just she, at this point in her confessional, she said she's, she wants to get a divorce, but she hasn't gotten the divorce. So until that happens, she's going to continue to try and, and see if she can work through her marriage. Now, down at the man cave, because that's what I'm calling it. I forgot what he calls it. But Cecil, he brings, I believe it's Greg, um, over. Quad's husband. Yes. Oh, I got the name. So Cecil brought Greg over. And Cecil has another male friend over. His name might be Mark, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the whole thing is that they bring up a couple of things. They bring up the fact that. Actually, hold on, because I, I, I forgot. I know part of it is Cecil is working on a new marketing plan you know, he, he, for this company that they're doing. And it's a cool company. The concept essentially is it's an application where kids, the youth, they would go and log on. They would look at these small jobs. So it's, let's say I have a garage and my garage is full of trash. And I need someone to come and clean up that garage um, by... 2 30 p.m come in uh work for like two hours or whatever get paid 25 30 dollars and we're all good i said i like that that has potential i didn't look at the market so i don't know if there's already stuff like that but i said okay okay cool now part of the issue is he took a large sum of money out of the account and just went along and did it now again we know that he works and I'm sure makes good money. Um, the IT business has been doing going through a reorg. Um, so I'm not sure if how much of that money was straight up his, how much of it was Simone's, because Simone didn't know about it. But so then Greg was just like, oh, dude, I, I already know we're doing something like that's like. But then they kind of talked about how with Greg, it's more so little things around the house like quad complains about him taking out the trash or not taking out the trash and trying to figure out dude how are you not how is there trash on top of trash this doesn't make <laughs> anyway so quad she goes to her friend's house remember the friend that had the birthday party for her last year because i said why does she look familiar it's emily we're at emily's house her house is beautiful her house is huge it's grand so quad she's just there to talk about what's currently going on with her and Greg and how her and Greg aren't communicating, how she's not sure if Greg and herself, they'll be able to continue on. And it's really sad. It's sad because you, I do believe that they love each other. Definitely communication is a huge issue there. And that's what even Cecil and Sven were saying. Come on, come on. You love your wife. You two clearly just aren't seeing eye to eye on certain things because you're not really communicating. Quad, we've seen she's the type where if there's any type of issues um, where it gets loud because he gets loud, she shuts down. That's not the type of communication style that works for her coming from her husband. Just like how um, with Greg, that's what he does whenever he's really animated wants to make a point he gets loud and he acknowledged that but they were just telling him his friends that for a lot of people that wouldn't work so why would that work for your wife so i said okay this is okay we're getting something out of this great so dr simone goes to dr jackie's house she 
<laughs> she parked outside ready to go because she's still on call. And Dr. Jackie went to show. Finally got Fifty Shades of Pink, which is her uh, breast cancer organization. And the website set up. She has the pictures that she took last year. Of course, she looks great. She also has other survivors, um, their pictures on there, as well as uh, a couple of the girls who took the pictures and were able to help. But then the conversation switched over to Curtis. Oh my God, this is amazing. The names, they're just coming to me. So Jackie and Curtis, Jackie goes over the fact that she talked to her husband. And, you know, things were going well. He was taking accountability and then things took a slight turn when he decided to go and say that, oh, you know, it's been, it's just been hard for the both of us. So hard for both of us. Jackie had that look of, I'm sure it has, but that's not what I wanted to hear from you. <laughs> no. And Simone had to kind of rail it back in like, look, Jackie, we know that it's a different type of hard. You've had the public scrutiny um, from all sides, a lot of people are saying stuff, looking at him, but not saying anything and talking behind his back, but not doing it to his face. And that's kind of the difference there. But Jackie says she is interested in just at least continuing the conversations because if her marriage is going to end, which is something she never wanted, she wants it to be on her terms. She wants it to be on her terms, not just because this terrible thing happened and she didn't go to kind of see where her, all the areas where her marriage went wrong to kind of aid, not cause, but aid in this. So I said, okay, cool. Simone's saying, oh, so I guess we're going to go out together. Uh, go, go, do what? We're, we're, we're going to do, do, do what? <laughs> no, no, I didn't say all that. I did not say all of that. Anyway, we see where I can test this house. She has everything going. She dressed up like Aaliyah. And her boyfriend definitely looked like Tim. <laughs> he looked like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I wasn't thinking. Her husband. Her husband. Um, I, he kind of looked like he was supposed to be dressed up as a mix between Timbaland and Tupac. <laughs> That's what I got. So his name is Dr. Scott. Anyway. We get downstairs and Miss Renee, she has one of the kids. Now, I guess because of how uh, Contessa said it, like, oh, can you go and take care of so-and-so or bring them in the backyard, do this or do that. She was trying to do that while also get the food together. She was getting very frustrated. So then Contessa realized and said, okay, I'll, I'll go. I have this. Can you just um, instead go and do that with and so then she was irritated she was irritated the entire time she was all right while the daughter was around but then the irritation came out as soon as the daughter left and the little girl left and then she went in the house and she was mumbling stuff uh on her breath i think she even said to contessa i don't like your attitude and then threw something at her it, I don't think it hit her, but it might have hit, like, one of the walls while trying to leave the house. And so, like, Contessa was like, what? Because Dr. Scott was looking, was looking at, at Miss Renee, like, what? Excuse, what are you thinking? Uh-uh, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. And then he even acknowledged, Miss Renee, she's been a little saucy. She's been a little saucy. There's always been some spice, but it was never on that level of disrespect. Because that's not what we're doing. So, Miss Renee had to go home. She had to go home. Contessa had to get, what was it, her cousin or her friend to go and watch her kids instead because Miss Renee was on one. And like I said, I really think Miss Renee, I don't think all this camera stuff is for her only because of how, I guess, people will perceive what she's doing and around these other accomplished ladies. And it's like, oh, you're having this woman telling her what to do. I, I think it's, it's just a lot, but the disrespect is not okay. And... Again, we don't know how Contessa's tone is with her most of the time. I don't know if that's a contributing factor. And now she all of a sudden cares because there's lights, cameras, action. But who knows? I will say the party was cool. She has she has a beautiful house. Great pool. And she had the Fly Girls from like In Living Color. 
Shout out to Bruno Mars and Cardi B for finesse. That video was not that big. And that camera was so clear. I said, oh my God. I'm like, are you, are you right here, Bruno? Are you right here, Car Cardi? Really? Anyway. And the moves. And, anyway. So they were there. Uh, heavenly dressed up as Peppa. Um, people started to roll in. Things seemed fine. Uh, Dr. Simone, who she dressed up as? I'm trying to think. I don't remember. Maybe it was just a certain look. But it was cool seeing everyone's look in the 90s. And they were just saying how it was just a lot of fun. And they were partying. But we finally got to have that conversation between Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Simone. And because uh, all the ladies were coming. Uh, it's a pool party. So everyone was prepared. Or I shouldn't say everyone. Half of everyone was prepared. Quad came with her only her well she was completely covered at the top basically but her swimming bottoms almost if you will and there was this little weird exchange between quad and mariah because mariah said oh yeah by the way happy birthday quad said oh yes and i'm sorry i missed your part i said oh okay you two aren't friends so i guess that's fine dr jackie i was surprised dr jack i said look at you she acknowledged that look through the 90s she was already an adult she was already paying her own bills had her own mortgage paying student loans so she was doing the thing she was doing the thing um all everyone else was still grinding to make it somewhere <sighs> eugene comes and toy is pissed because eugene got to spend some money on his outfit on his yeah on his outfit and toy was like i have to go and get this stuff out of the closet <laughs> Like, look, I had to get the Nike Air Force to join it. <laughs> Sorry. But well, anyway, uh, like I said, there was already a conversation between Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Simone. And that conversation was of um, Dr. Heavenly wanted her husband to come there to mediate. I said, okay, that's fine. And it worked. It worked. Because Dr. Simone got to say what she needed to say. And she did apologize for how it made Heavenly feel. But. I, I'm sorry. Heavenly was just. I get why she was all all upset. Because she didn't know that's what they were doing. So I guess it's the premise of. You didn't really give me the option. It was like we're already here. So I'm going to look petty. I'm going to look this way. I'm going to look that way if I don't go in. Even though I personally didn't want to. But. The way how she was doing it was in her overreactive way. So she apologizes and she understands that she's still a work in progress. She's still growing. Uh, Contessa, apparently she has Alizé. And I just think of Monique and the Parkers. I just think of Nikki Parker whenever I hear Alizé. Alizé, hey! <laughs> so, anyway, uh, part of the issue is Contessa has all of these mixed drinks and they're like this is cool but okay no I can't be drinking all this because of miss renee i think that's why contessa was doing the whole look this party is not about being bougie it's not about being ghetto it's just about being real i said well there's a lot of black people they're drinking bottles from the head but i get what you're trying to say but mariah wasn't appreciating hearing oh uh you know, this party isn't bougie, this party isn't bougie. Because, yes, Mariah's party was bougie. It looked very nice, though. It looked very nice, but it was. We, we need to start calling the thing a thing. So, Mariah's feeling a certain way. Um, Contessa's talking about how Miss Renee had to leave because, she, you know, she got a little rude and disrespectful today. And they're looking at her like, today? That's all we've seen from her. <laughs> But she was like, no, I don't know, maybe it's just being around certain you know, the ladies made her feel a certain way. But while Mariah was talking to Dr. Simone, which again, this whole thing is weird because I said, when did they make up? But uh, all the ladies finally come around and some mess starts to happen because Dr. Simone goes and does her usual. I said, oh God, she's been drinking. Here we go. Here we go. She goes and brings up, so at Mariah's event, she was giving out awards, and she gave an award to Toya, but the shade was towards Dr. Heavenly, and Dr. Heavenly took it and said, all right, here's how this goes. That whole thing about, oh, your mother, um, 
your mother, you know, at least with Tori, she's never said anything towards her mother. And Dr. Heaven was like, of course you're talking about me. No, I was talking about you. Of course you're talking about me. And it's like, oh, Mariah, you know what? I forgot what Mariah said before that, but Dr. Hemley jumped shark again, and was like, yeah, but, you know, you, yeah, you know what, your mother, and I said, Dr. Heavenly, you just, you just apologized to her last week, and you fell right back into the same trap, you do this all the time, and then you want people to be like, oh no, it's okay, how could you, and everyone's looking at you like, really, again, when you, this is supposed to be squashed? Dr. Simone looking like, oh, Lord, did I do that? Everyone looking at her like, yeah, you aided in that. So then it becomes a bigger thing because Mariah's like, uh-uh, you're not doing that this time. And then she was just like, oh, you and you did And Dr. Heaven's like, you and you did And people have to break it up. They don't get into a physical fight. It's just that make sure that nothing happens because <sighs> Heavenly said, well, you know your mother likes to swim with that purse. I said, come back next week. 